what it do it's your boy drew bloom back at it again for a first time reaction today i will be covering the brand new album trey songs dropped not too long ago called back home which he dropped just about maybe a little bit over a year more or less since he dropped his duo album 1128 which to me still has strong replay values man so <clears throat> When I get to Trey songs from my vibe out sesh, y'all gonna really enjoy this. Um, Cause we gonna vibe out for a good minute. But that being said, this album is definitely a bit too long. Well, not too long, don't get me wrong. It's 22 tracks deep, so it's pretty long. He's got a few features, quality over quantity at the end of the day, cause there are some notable names in here. So I look forward to covering this. I do apologize to whoever was waiting for me to drop this, man. I know I said I was gonna drop it like last week. Some stuff happened, couldn't get to it, but I'm here, we're gonna get it out right now. So y'all already know the drill. In case you don't know, this is where I usually go ahead and cut the chat, get in the track, and vibe out. That was a weak ass vibe, there we go. Um, track number one, Be My Guest, official audio. <laughs> Why I say official audio? Be My Guest, track number one. Let's get it. This was pretty dope. Um, gave me similar vibes to Circles, which I've listened to, I think, a while back. I gotta say, he's really taking it down to the contemporary R&B sounds. 
Um, to me, it's definitely a return to that same vibe that he was trying to create on Tremaine. Obviously, which stems from his day one music, where it's just calm down. Like It really gives you that late 2000 feel. It really does. Um, obviously, with the percussions being a bit updated to, you know, with much more fluid sounds than, you know, a, temp a typical hi-hat hitting every fourth quarter of a beat. So, you know what I mean? It's a nice mix of... But, um, that being said, you know, while the beat is definitely advanced, it does go back to its laid-back R&B origins from that late era, which really was dope music to begin with anyways, you know what I mean? But it's just the 808 era just took over and just created this dope new, you know, sounds for hip-hop, man. So, honestly, you know what I mean? It's cool Trey's taking it back. Um, I like the song. It feels great. Like I said, it gives me that Tremaine vibe as well. And, you know, he's really very down to earth with this. And, you know, he's always down to earth with his music for the most part. Even when he's on his player mode, you know, he still keeps it real. But I just like it, man, because, you know what I mean? He's just taking things on a contemporary type of route. And I, I rock with it. I rock with it. So that being said, man, uh, we're going to get to the second track. Right. Track number two is titled Save It. Sorry, y'all. I gotta pause it real quick. Um, I'm gonna I'm keep it real 100. I hate this 808 pattern so much. I hate it so much. Every artist now is adapting this shit, and I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. And to me, it just takes away the joy I hear from the melodies of the instrumentals. Trey Song's doing this performance. Done done because you know it's that industry bullshit and it's like come on trey you too really i gotta hear august do it on one song i gotta hear fucking tory lane's adopted as if it's its own organic sounds I, and i gotta hear trey this fuck man I'm fucking sick of this shit dog <laughs> that's why like look man i get sometimes things trends but why does everybody gotta hop on that shit why you know what I mean? Like, you, like I felt like Trey already found himself, you know, once in the mid-teens. And he was carrying that shit through. And now it's like, come on, man. I'm hoping this is only a one-time type of performance, for, you know, and I don't have to hear that type of 808. It's just, I know the pattern so much. It's so fucking basic. You know what I mean? Mix it up, god damn it. Like, y'all production usually is on point like that. Like, Trey don't fuck around with his production. From some of the songs where even where he can make it as ratchet as hell. The production still is like 11 out of 10. So to me, I'm like, come on. 
switch it up. Because to me, it's just predictable. I hear that done, then snare. Done, done, snare. 808, snare. 808, 808, snare. 808, snare. 808, 808, snare. It's the same fucking pattern that everyone's fucking doing. I'm sorry that I have to go on this rant, but I'm sick of this 808 shit. Shit really got me motivated to drop my own music, and it's coming soon. Fuck it. But anyways, enough of that. Let's continue with the song. He's t on this production, kind of like what August did too. They still try to mix it, mix it up, so that way it still sounds distinctive and unique, which I'll give him credit for. But forgive me, y'all. I just hate that 808 pattern. I hate it so much because it just, to me, seeing someone do this to an 808, it's like seeing a man hit a woman. Like I can't stand that shit. That they ain't shit. They ain't supposed to do. To me, an 808, you. You gotta let that shit come in, but like at the same time, that 808 gotta vibrate too, you know what I mean? Create the, mo the moment, and it'll give you that goosebumps on your arms. I just wish there was some kind of transition within the production to get you that feel for a minute, and then you can go back and do this, you know what I mean? It's just, but at the end of the day, it's a slow tempo song to me. I think, don't get me wrong, while I was going on my rant, I think this song will grow on me. So let me not get that, uh, you know, let me not get that misconstrued. I'm definitely going to be rocking with this song because there's just a lot good in here. It's just, man, I'm, I can't tell you how sick of the, of that 808 pattern I am. Like I might be the only one, but I don't give a damn. I hate that 808 pattern. I hate it. It's so basic. It's so predictable. But like I said here, after I'm not, after I'm listening to it again, I'm like, okay, he is definitely trying to be a little more unique with it, but fuck, man. Anyways, track number three. But fuck that 808 shit. Um, back to the song. Trey was great. Love the way he sang on this, the way he transitioned into the hook. Then went back and sang it again. Save it for me. I mean, it's dope. I like the song. It really is. And to me, if the artist got to implement some a little bit of trends to kind of keep the musical flow and all that or you're trying to get some new generations to come and cross over and really listen to some real music I can definitely put more respect into the latter you know what I mean and that's what I get a feeling from Trey it's like he's trying to like get these young folks to really check out his music like you like that style well check out my music I got something even more dope than that industry garbage you should be hearing on the radio I feel like that's what he's trying to do and to me I can I can't do nothing but pay respect to that but damn y'all I just hate that especially when you come in off that you know to whom it may concern when you come off that anticipation anticipation three which to me this song gives me some a4 vibe like some anticipation four vibe like crazy um you know what I mean like it was just during that era where everyone was letting like the 808s hit and that was like the best era of hip-hop for me man my favorite era really you know the drill the trap scene was dope everyone was really rocking with the sounds they put in their music and everyone really killed it and to me it brought it's like production brought the best out of the artist the artist brought the best out of the production because no one else would have done it justice you know what i mean but yeah save it was dope next track hands on let's get it <laughs> Hands on, hands on, with you on your hands on. 
that was quick. But I like hands-on, so that's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It just, as long as you're not doing it every track, I don't think I can, you know, I can live with one or two tracks. That's how it was for me when I listened to um, the Product 3. It was only a couple tracks where he did that, but the 808 for the most part was doing its job. I mean, like, they still stayed, they were like, nah, I still want my 808s to rock through like this. So to me, it showed that they were resilient to the culture change and the industry trends, and it shows that they have, they still have the individualism locked in. So to me, I can't help but respect y'all for being real niggas with that shit, so, you know. Speaking of August and Trey, I mean, to me, I think these two right there, I guess that, that you know, that crown of R&B sitting right there, I think those two right now are going to be head to head. August just dropped the product three just maybe about a few months ago, you know, and Trey comes and drops this. I mean, 2020, whew, we're starting to come at a really good year for R&B. I'm just saying, y'all, like the return of August. Trey Song's really turn, turning a new chapter in his life with his son. I mean, damn. So, gives me hope that music is going to be even better and more dope going forward. You know what I mean? So, hopefully the rest of these artists out here, especially Tori, paying attention to, you know, your older and more experienced peers and really see what they're doing, man. See what they're doing, and that's what you need to implement with your own style. Travis, take note. Eric Bellinger, take note. This is what you got to do. You know what I mean? Don't lose your touch. Don't lose this special, unique touch that you have by drowning yourself into trends, man. Because once you do that and lose yourself and your identity that you had built in the first place, you lose your whole foundation. You know what I mean? So with Trey, even if he did crumble, it was hardly noticeable because, because, you know, he did a great job covering it with the music. And at the end of the day, you can't. It, it, what, what was the one week project that Tory, I mean, not Tory, Trey Songs has dropped? All right. You know what I mean? From the moment he went into it with Trigger, after post Trigger, what did he drop that was weak? Nothing. Every project that he's dropped has been 10 out of 10. Every one of them. So. Let's get to the next song, man. Hands on was great, but now we're gonna hit the next track, track number four, Lost and Found. All right. Let's get it. If your body was a
Now the next track is Circles. I've already heard this song. I got a first reaction, so we can skip this one. But that would have been track number five. Um, Circles is definitely a dope track. Cause we going in circles. We keep going in circles. All we do is go over and over. Over and over. Over and over again. We going in circles. <clears throat> we keep going in circles. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the whole gist of it right there. But then more on that too, because you know he's like, you want closure? If you want closure, he said, don't take your clothes off. You know he's really all about this. Let's really get things straightened now, because if we keep playing games, we're just gonna keep going in circles. So that's some grown man. Not grown, I'm sorry, but that's like some grown up mentality right there. So, Circles is a phenomenal song right there. But from Circles, we're going to go to track number, no, not number five, I'm sorry. Track number six, Round and Round. Let's get it. All right, what can I? Damn advertise. Track number six, Round and Round. Oh, yeah. Another short interlude. So you know what? I gotta pay attention to this, man. Uh, but yeah, so 22 tracks, but it seems like he's adapting the same thing Tilla did. Um, on who was it that did like, or I think it was like Travis Scott on Astro World, or who was it that did like a long ass track length, but most of the songs were like two minutes or so i think like astral world travis scott did something similar to that bryce and tilla with um true to self which was really long for track length wise but as far as the whole album length it was like under an hour i think it might be the same case for uh back home so let me just keep going on speeding through it but round and round was dope i liked it i was hoping the 808 would have came through some you know cold sense would have came in and this would have been more I'm like, I'm, I'm needing more from round and round. 42 seconds is way too short. I wanted something to happen on there, but it's all good. We're gonna get to track number seven, Two Ways. Oh, yeah. oh. Some A, I'm telling you, some anticipation hey, the vibe right off. here. Let's go. We might have to try something else. Cause it's too late for us Girl, I got love Got my mind made up and I can't do this no more But somehow you got me so unsure It goes two ways in love Can't be a one
day I've been thinking I should do the same But I can never put you through the pain I don't wanna have to turn the pain See which way the story about the play We might have to try another day We might have to try another way Leaning and driving I'll be there if I think Oh my god, yo, hey, 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 whoa, so far I think that's my favorite song, that's my favorite song right now, we only about, my god, we're seven tracks deep in, cause it's too late for love, it goes too late for love. Oh my God, man, I felt that right there. Oh my, man. Listen, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, a couple years back I wrote a song called One Way I Said Love Ain't a One Way Street. It goes both ways. I don't give a shit. Look, I'm not saying anything other than like I was on that same mentality and the fact that Trey was thinking this and made that song, I don't give a shit. I'm not here complaining of nothing. I'm not here to say nothing, but it feels good that someone fucks with what I was thinking mentally. You know what I mean? I don't care if I was lagging anyways. I was lagging. I should have made that stuff. It don't matter. But my point is, I fucks with that energy. That's what I really, this is why I really dig with Trey's songs and why I really listen to anything he drops. Anything he drops, I take with serious attention. In fact, <clears throat> it was some dude that was trying to get my attention, if you notice, first or second track. Usually, I try to help people out. Sometimes they be panhandling and all that. Nah, I ain't having it. When Trey is singing, my undivided attention is right here. I'm listening to the music. I'm vibing out. I don't want nobody interrupting me. I'm not pausing my video. I'm not... I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> don't get me wrong. No, seriously, like, don't be afraid to help people, man. Like my best message like i do it i do it all the time but um that one time i'm like dude i'm sorry you can't bug me i i would love to give you a dollar that i definitely need for myself but i would like i want you to survive as well but right now i'm in a time where i cannot have anyone disturb me don't be waving at me go at, there's like 30 other people right here on this damn block go ask those other 30 people first they ain't give you nothing come back to me wait for me while I'm talking like this not while I'm in the middle of the music no nah, I don't that to me that's a mortal sin you see someone vibing out in music you do not kill the vibe that's that's to me is the biggest thing that's why when I hear music pop nothing but either way um two ways that shit was strong all right man it definitely hit different and speaking of that that's gonna be the title for the next song. I could talk about two ways all day, but to me, it was a well-made song. The way it hit, it felt like a classic, man. Like something that you would hear. To me, this could have been on the next anticipation tape. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I felt like A4 was right around the corner. I'm cool with this album. I'm definitely cool with it. But man, something about that anticipation series, you just know you're getting something surreal from Trey. If it ain't love, then why? I mean, my God, you know what I mean? Like he does that, man. He gets you really in like the most vulnerable spot. And I don't. What I mean by most vulnerable is like it gets you thinking about love the most because you know we all we all got our special times we spend with you know people and all that. But speci specifically that significant other. I don't know why I'm having trouble. I was like my brain thinks two different words and I just mash them together, but specifically man when you with a significant other that 
you haven't you had a good time with that you want to be with man like trey's got the best music for that man that being said let's get to track um i'm losing count here track number eight hit different because i can definitely tell you that other track definitely hit different two ways right there mm. one more thing before i get to this track keep in mind this is my first time listen you know you did a damn good job on making the song you know sound timeless when you get somebody who heard who listened to the song for the first time and midway through the song they feel it and they're already singing along with it that's how you know you did a great job look Dre props <clears throat> props on the previous track but let's get to track number eight hit different Sounds like Teddy Riley. Okay. Two twenty eight test, early late, but you're banging my heart, cause you still out 